Hello viewers and welcome to yet another special video production from Cardboard of the Rings, the bi-weekly podcast about the Lord of the Rings, the card game, which is a living card game by Fantasy Flight Games. If you checked out our last adventure, you know that our uh, first foray into the Hunt for Gollum scenario went uh, somewhat a little uh, opposite to what was expected. So uh, Matthew, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about what went wrong last time? Well, Mitch, what didn't go wrong the last time? Um, you know, we started. I started off with a fantastic hand, if, if there was a silver lining to our abysmal failure. But I think, the, you know, right off the bat for, with staging, we drew a hunter from Mordor. Then we drew a clue, which then has the guarded keyword, of course. And then we got another hunters from Mordor. Um, so already we had two really potent enemies on the field then we were losing our resources due to treacheries and then more hunters came out of the encounter deck and we just never could recover i lost all of my heroes you lost two of yours and then you hit the threat cap of 50 and it was a very sad day <laughs> yeah it's it seemed like the perfect storm of things coming out of the encounter deck i was expecting a very location rich experience from this scenario and just like you said right off the bat two hunters from mordor soon a third and fourth went ahead and joined it uh clue in play meant that it was just an absolutely insurmountable amount of threats uh it came down to one staging where we could maybe you know have some tiny sliver of hope to possibly get things under control and of course as we're sitting there with 33 threats we draw a doomed one card instantly hit the engagement cost threshold for those hunters and then it was losing heroes left and right and the game was over before it started but uh man if only we had had brock iron fist <laughs> <laughs> right exactly as soon as gimli left play he uh, no. could have made all the difference there but uh <laughs> i don't think you've have you made any changes to your deck no. Uh, well, you know, we didn't really even get a chance in our last uh, attempt here to see if our decks were good or bad, so I left mine the same in hopes that it will perform a little bit better uh, this time. Yeah, so do you want to just uh, say maybe a little bit about what the viewers can expect from your side of the table? Well, as is uh, usual, tactics, leadership, um, I'm hoping that I can pump out some more allies to, to help us deal with these um, hunters from Mordor, um, otherwise, as you mentioned, this quest uh, involves a lot of, of questing, and so I won't be able to contribute much there, but hopefully if we don't get as many of the hunters out, I'll be able to help uh, do something here. We'll see. <laughs> Sure, and I never want to try and, you know, blame the uh, luck of the draw on a loss or a, right. you know, win, but it seems like just everything that could have possibly gone wrong last time did. So yeah. just to go ahead and throw my own deck up on the screen to remind people I'm running a two lore deck. I've got Barivor and our new hero Bilbo for maximum card draw. I'm running effects like Lorien's Wealth. Um, lots of really heavy willpower characters like uh, Eowyn, I'm using the uh, Rivendell Minstrel that's brand new, tons of effects like Radagast's Cunning, Secret Paths, um, card drawing allies, threat reduction effects, cancellation effects, lots of delightful little attachments, so hopefully it should all go very well, and if the encounter deck is a little bit more forgiving this time, Hopefully we'll be able to see our way to the end of this scenario. So I guess with that said, shall we go ahead and start our game? Uh, yeah, I've got my adult beverage in hand to help <laughs> take off the sting of the last one. That reminds me of my former co-worker who always used that term. <laughs> Sean, you will be missed. All so right. why don't we go ahead and shuffle up our decks. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and draw an initial hand of six cards. And let's see what I get. I guess right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and mulligan my hand. It was all lore. And even though we had our Istari comrade, Northern Tracker is so, so immensely useful to this scenario. Yeah, I've got some really good stuff and some really bad stuff. So I think that I'm going to take a mulligan as well. Yeah. My second hand I'm not feeling too good about. Uh, shall we go ahead and make myself the first player once we get started? Uh, yeah. 
Okay. So, uh, I guess I'm stuck with my mulliganed hand. Well, the one card that I was uh, not excited about losing, I got, in again, in the mulligan. So that's pretty good. Uh, other, I think it's a much better hand for me, so that's good. Okay. Well, why don't we go ahead and begin our scenario then. So we've got to take a look at quest phase 1A here. And the way that this is going to work is we have to reveal one card per player from the encounter deck and add it to the staging area. So this was an absolute nightmare last game. <laughs> But let's see how we do this time. So I'm going to make sure to shuffle the encounter deck. And let's go ahead and see. Card number one is a false lead. So the first player chooses and shuffles a card with the printed clue trait back into the encounter deck. If there are no clue cards in play, this gains surge. So of course, it does gain surge. It's kind of a shame, actually, to see one of these in the discard pile so soon. And it's replaced by an East Bank. So if we make this the active location, ally cards cost an additional one yeah. resource. But that's only if it's the active location. Right. Card number two is going to be a Misty Mountain Goblins. Okay. So glad to see this instead of a Hunter. So mm -hmm. this is going to strip a little bit of uh, progress tokens from our quest. But five threat out in the staging area. A much more reasonable start this game, I think. Yep. So we're going to go ahead and progress on to quest phase 1B. And what's important to keep in mind is every single time that we quest successfully, we have to have the first player look at the top three cards of the encounter deck, reveal one of them, and uh, discard the other two. And of course, that chosen card is going to get added to the staging area. Something we mentioned last video is doing to the... Uh, Owing to the nature of this digital play surface, we're not going to be able to only have the first player look at these cards, uh, but we'll have the first player exclusively uh, take a look at these. I guess there's not really anything that prohibits the first player from talking about them at all, so maybe this is just kind of a, a strange little card, but in any case, we kind of have to ignore that rule here. So why don't we go ahead and get started? Okay. Planning first phase. I've got Bilbo Baggins in play, so I'm going to draw an additional card uh, beyond my one and beyond my resources. Something I need you to keep in mind here is I've got a certain song that's going to be uh, smoothing mm. out your resource allotment. So Perfect. Just a good thing to keep in mind there. Mm -hmm. And other than that, I think I might as well... I suppose I'll be playing a Erebor Hammersmith. So his response doesn't get to do anything, but at least it's an ally. So mm -hmm. how about you for your planning? Uh, let's see. Um, well, I have some decent cards in my hand. And again, I'm stuck with the exact same first decision I had last time. Um the Misty Mountain Goblins aren't that scary, but again, worried about not being able to uh, block things effectively, so I think I'm going to play an ally. I'll play the Gondorian Spearman. Okay. And um, I am going to save that leadership resource, so that is it for me. Okay, well, uh, I suppose that is it for our planning phase. So for questing, what do we want to do? We've got five threat out here in the staging area. I could commit a total of five, six, seven, eight to the quest. Potentially, you could make it, say, 10 with Gimli, 11 with uh, Thalon. Theodred? I, or, yeah, sorry, Theodred. I'm mm -hmm. tempted to use Barivor's effect here. I really don't have anything too powerful in my hand. Okay. But again, I'm a little bit nervous about what will come off the encounter deck. And if we happen to quest successfully then we have to add even more cards into play. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'm going to exhaust Barivor to have myself draw a couple cards here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, contribute my remaining characters to the quest. So I'm going to go ahead and do six base. Okay. And if you send Gimli, are you still going to be able to deal with these goblins? Uh, yep. Okay. All right, so I guess that's going to be a total of 11. Mm -hmm. Would you like Theodred's resource? 
Um, I definitely could probably use it on Aon. Yes. Okay, go ahead. All right, thank you very much. Sure. And uh, something to keep in mind is, in case we do get a big bad enemy, I've got a uh, a trap in my hand that I could mm. spring upon it. So. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and do staging. So we've contributed eleven will. Card number one is a hunters mm. from Mordor, but mm -hmm. it's only two yep. threat to attack. Yeah. Card number two is... A clue. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay, well, flooding. So doomed right. one, first of all, so we're at 29 threat. Mm -hmm. uh, the wind revealed effect at this point does not do anything. And, yeah. of course, surge, it replaces Yikes. itself. So card number two again is... Mm -hmm. A oh. banks of the Anduin. All okay. right. So... All right, so it looks like we're only up against five, six, seven, eight threat. That means we're going to succeed by three. Um, do either of us want to throw a card to Eowyn? I certainly could. I'm not... I will get rid of the Silverload Archer. Kind of an expensive ally. Okay. Maybe I'll get rid of a... Well, yeah... Okay, I will just allow you to do that. So that's going to go ahead and boost our willpower to 12. Well, thank you for allowing me to discard my own card, Mitch. <laughs> well, no problem. I just mean I'll let you be the uh, sole card right, tosser. I do what you meant. <laughs> All right, so uh, after our after we've quested successfully here, the first player is going to look at the top three cards of the encounter deck, pick one to reveal and put into play, and discard the other three. So those cards are going to be as follows. And I already know what I'm going to pick. I'm going to be picking the Evil Storm, which has no effect. So let me discard these two. Evil Storm, of course, deals one damage to each character, only if you have 35 threat or higher. It does nothing. So thanks for the freebie encounter deck. Nice. All right, so travel. We have Banks of the Anduin. We have the East Bank. If we're planning on playing any allies next turn, East Bank are, is going to be making that more expensive. Right. I'm not necessarily planning on doing that, but I don't know about you. No, I wasn't either. Okay, so shall we try and get this one out of the way now? Sure. Okay, so let's go ahead and make that the active location. I'll shift all these guys over one. And we'll go ahead and move on to engagement. So what do we want to do? Um, well, you had asked me earlier if I could handle the um, the Misty Mountain Goblins, which I assume was your oh-so-subtle way of asking if I would optionally engage them. And, of course, I will. Okay. So Misty Mountain Goblins can come down and uh, attack you. Yep. Something to think about is, I guess, if you have a little bit of resource acceleration... It may not be a bad idea to throw that onto one of my lore characters, just because there's okay. so much I could put into play. And if we end up doing that, I could alternatively just, say, trap a hunter from Mordor here. Okay. Well, lucky for you, I was saving my resource for just that very purpose. Okay. So, do you want to take the goblins, or do you want to take the hunter, or do you want to do both? And I don't want the hunter yet, I don't think. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I don't. Um, let's see. So, the hunter, or the, sorry, the goblin's going to get... Right, so I'll go ahead and card. give it a shadow card. And how do you want to deal with its attack? Um... You could uh, throw away your Gondorian Spearman. Yeah, I was you... thinking that, yeah, that was my initial plan. Then I was thinking, well, I could do Undefended with Gimli, but if I want to kill him this turn, I, do... I have to do the Spearman. Well, I do have some insurance. The Spearman plus Legolas is enough damage to kill it. Oh, that's right. That's and right. if there was some horrible shadow effect, I would be able to cancel that. Okay, for you. well, then I guess we'll pump up Gimli a little bit then. It'll be Undefended. All right, so Undefended. And I don't have to spend a card. Perfect. So a Signs of Golem, but it goes into our discard pile. So two damage to Gimli, and how yeah. do you want to respond? The Spearman and Legolas will swing. Okay, so before I remove this enemy from play, it's forced effect triggered. So let me go ahead and remove one progress token from our current yeah. quest card. The Misty Mountain Goblins is at zero hit points. Legolas's ability triggers... 
to put two progress tokens on our East Bank location. Yep. All right. Well, I've got to say I'm far happier at the end of our first turn. Yeah, still nervous. I think I probably will be the entire video, but much, much better. <laughs> sure. So why don't we ready? I'll make you first player. Thank Boost you. our threats up to 30. Be I sure to draw, draw. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. two cards because of yep. Bilbo Baggins here. I love Bilbo. And let me do my resources. Okay, and I got a uh, Dunedain Ranger friend. So okay. things are looking great. So well, well, the first thing I'll do is what we had talked about, resource, uh, some resource generation. Awesome. The question is who to put it on. I am thinking uh, so long as I can get maybe a resource every other turn from Theodred. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, man, this is a... I, oh, God. Why, well, why don't we just pick Eowyn? Let's get our our ranger friend okay. into play ASAP. So let me okay. take control of that. Mm -hmm. Awen gets it, and go ahead and finish your planning. And I think I will put the Dwarven Axe on Gimli. Sounds like a perfect plan. So he's already and... at six attack. Mm -hmm. And that is it for me. Okay, so for me... If I were to play a tracker friend, he would cost an additional resource. I think at this point that one progress token is not worth it for me, so I'm going to hold off on that. Uh, I am, however, going to... Hmm, I will play... Let's see. I'll spend one resource to go ahead and do a Song of Kings on, I think, Legolas is probably a little bit safer than okay. Gimli is. So now Perfect. he counts as both a tactics and leadership hero. Perfect. And uh, that's all I'm going to do. So okay. why don't we go ahead and transition into questing? Yeah, I will send Theodred and give the resource to himself. Okay. Uh, do you think I should send Gimli? Well... Well, I could take care of the, the, the Mordor, dude. Right. Gimli and Legolas could certainly make sh uh, some pretty short Yeah, short let's, all right, so I'm just going to send Theodred then. Right, and we're only up against three threat right now at the moment. Mm -hmm. Although, you know... Who knows? <laughs> yeah, interestingly enough, that could certainly change. Uh, I mm -hmm. think I'm going to commit maybe all my characters this round. So I'll do okay. one, five, six, seven, eight, and you bring it to nine. So let's see what we get off the encounter deck. I've got some corrective effects, so... Okay. Ooh. Card number one is... A Signs Ugh. of Gollum. So immediately our Hunters is going to get an additional two threat, and that is mm -hmm. a guarded card. Yep. Oh, God. Okay, so this is when reveal discard one resource from each hero's resource pool if able. Exhaust any hero that could not discard Ugh. a resource from its pool. Yikes. So that is terrible i'm gonna lose a resource from each hero oh no oh miserable oh you can't cancel that right so all your heroes are exhausted yep and our final card hopefully a location is uh evil storm which has no effect so okay man that resource one is just nasty yeah it is, but fortunately, we've got uh, nine committed to the quest. We are only up against uh, five. Right. So, well, you know, I could have, I guess, snared that hunter if you'd have taken him and maybe thrown your spearman under the bus, but without the, you know, having lost those resources, that's no longer an option. Right. So, point is, we're going to end up making four progress. So, I'm going to put one on the east bank. And then I'm going to go ahead and put three on the Hunt Begins. So we've quested successfully. Uh, this response on the Signs of Gollum reads, After the player's quest successfully, the players may claim Signs of Gollum if it has no attached encounters. When claimed, attached it to any hero committed to the quest. It's a condition attachment. And if that attached hero is damaged or leaves play, return it to the top of the encounter deck. I'm going to go ahead and stick Signs of Gollum on Barivor. Uh, she's a little bit hardier than Eowyn, and when these hunters from Mordor interplay, um, or when they're revealed as a shadow effect, they directly damage that hero. So 
I guess with that said, we've made a little bit of progress. So first player, this is going to be you. We've got to take a look at the top three cards of the encounter deck. Okay. And you'll pick one for us to reveal and add to the staging area. Okay. So what are you thinking here? Oh, gosh. Well, we've got those... False Lead, which gets rid of a clue. Mm -hmm. Eastern Crow's Surges, which is scary. Yeah. And then Eaves of Mirkwood, which is, with a tracker in play, no well, big deal. Right. Definitely not the Eastern Crows. Okay. Uh, and I guess we probably... Well, do... we will want at least one clue for later on in the scenario. Yeah. So I, I, Eaves of Mirkwood seems the safest thing to me. Okay. So we'll reveal that and leave it in the staging area there. Mm -hmm. So travel, uh, do we want to go to either of these? Well, the Eaves of Mirkwood has a very nasty effect right. when it's the active location. Right. Yeah. Something I think to keep in mind is I would imagine chances are we can do two quest progress next turn. Uh, if we do travel to Banks of the Anduin, uh, if we're able to get it to leave play, like if we were to make five progress, it would be you know, a predictable shadow effect, maybe for this Hunters from Mordor. Yeah. Um, but on the other hand, Tracker would eventually get rid of it. And five progress might be a little much, since we've got this guy sitting out here for four, and there's right. a total of seven, so... Do you want to I... travel first player? I'll leave it up to you. Um... Uh... I guess we can do Banks at the end of one. Okay, all right. So Banks of the Anduin is going to be our active location. And I guess, uh, do you want to pull down this hunter? Nope. Okay, no. I didn't think so. So let's skip to refresh. Boost threat by one. And if you'd be so kind as to make me first player, I will go ahead and do my resources. Trigger Steward of Gondor for a second time and draw two cards thanks to Bilbo Baggins. And I drew the same unique lore ally both times. Let's see here. So, you've got six cards in your hand. I am going to go ahead and do four resources off of Eowyn for uh, an ally that's probably going to be absolutely pivotal for us having a chance at winning this. And other than that, could you... Well, I was going to say, at some point, would you put another song to use, or is one probably already more than enough? Um, that's probably okay. It's probably better used as Aowen fodder. Okay. So I think at this point I will go ahead and just uh, pass. So, it's all you. Um, I am going to play another Gondorian Spearman. Okay, great. And I will... I suppose I could have done this first, but I wanted to play him anyway. I'm going to play a Campfire Tale, so uh, a new card for this adventure pack. Great. And we each get to draw one card. And my card is a relatively useful ally. Yeah, I got an ally as well. Not that is actually not that bad either. Yeah. All right. Well, I think uh, shall we transition to questing? Absolutely. Okay, so let me see here. I think I'm going to go ahead and commit uh, five, six, seven to the quest. Okay. We're currently up against six. Um, um, it's not going to be the end of the world to me if we... Well, I guess I don't want to fail questing. I do want to make myself draw a couple cards. I didn't get what I wanted. Well... Yeah, so I'm happy with my committing seven. Okay. What are you going to send? Well, I'm going to send Theodred for sure. Okay. Um, do any of your folks need it, or...? I could probably use it on a lore character, I guess. Okay, go ahead. So I'll go ahead and throw that to, I guess, Bilbo is my only option. Okay. Um, I could certainly send Gimli... But if we want me to deal with that Hunters from Mordor this turn... I would say I'd prefer you kill the Hunter. Okay, well then I will send Theodred. Okay, great. I could probably discard a card if need be. 
Uh, well, let's see what we get. So, staging card number one. Oh, whoops. Before I do that, why don't I do my Northern Trackers token there? Right. Mm -hmm. So, staging card number one is... Another uh, Hunters from Mordor. All right, please no clue. So long as you can defend one, remember I do have a trap I can drop on mm -hmm. one next turn. Mm -hmm. So staging card number two, yeah, please no clue. Ah, oh, uh, it's a clue. <laughs> all right, so this is going to get oh, no. a little bit bad. All right, please not a hunter. And uh, it surges to a Gladden Fields, or at least a Gladden Fields is guarding uh, right. that. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. That is relatively nasty. But wow. here's what I'm going to do. So there are currently two clues in play. Both of these uh -huh. hunters are uh -huh. six threat each. There's uh -huh. going to be a total of uh, 14, 17 threat in the staging area. Yikes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pay one lore resource from two different heroes to do a pair of secret paths okay. like that. Okay. So that drops it to 12 threat right off the bat. Um, I'm going to go ahead and discard a Glaywine to boost Eowyn up a point. Okay. And I will discard a Horseback Archer, another expensive ally that I can do without in the meantime. Okay. So it looks like we're going to end up gaining a total of two threats. Okay, so we're still safe. Right. So let's see here. Uh, I think I've cleared out everything that needs to be cleared out. So we're I'm at 33 threat. I guess you're at 32 threats. Yeah. And well, part of me is wishing that I had saved one tactics resource. That would be pretty helpful. Um so I mean, who knows what's going to happen with our next staging, but I'd be able to handedly um sort of uh take care of a, a hunter from Mordor next turn mm -hmm. uh, when I'm at 33 threat once I have that one tactics resource. I could certainly do it this turn, defend with a, a spearman and get rid of one of them and then deal with the next one next turn. Uh, yeah, let's just do that. And then I'm thinking about it. I've got the two spearmen. I'm okay. I will optionally engage one of the, the hunters. Okay. So you will optionally engage one. Do shall I also optionally engage one, and you can use one spearman on each, and then I'll just snare the one that's with me. Um, because I think since it's six threat, it is absolutely necessary yeah, to get them out. Yeah. Of there. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so we'll each optionally engage one. I appreciate your willingness to throw your allies under the bus. Sure. And then that way you'll be able to kill one, and I can deal mm -hmm. with the other one. Yeah. Great. So. Not too cool to have those locations out there, but hopefully next turn we're not going to be up against 17 threat again. No. Uh, I just took a look through the encounter deck discard pile, and did you happen to forget to raise your threat when we did that doomed one card? Oh, we, our threats should be the same, correct? Right, I think they should yeah, be identical. Okay. Then so, yeah, I probably did. Okay, well, whatever I was case, so worried about the surge being a clue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think I forgot. Oh, well, I guess at this point, we've seen three out of the four clues and yeah. two out of the five hunters from Mordor, so yep. 29 encounter cards left. But okay. anyway, so travel, no option, since we've got oh. Banks the Anduin right here. Combat phase. So starting with me, first player, and then you, next player, last player. Yep. How do we want to... Okay, so Hunters yep. from Mordor is attacking for six. Its shadow effect is... Yes, I'm glad to see this thing gone. Yeah. So no resource drain, and unfortunately your spearman is very, very dead. But it yep. does deal one token damage to the mm -hmm. hunter. And then my final spearman will uh, do that. Yep. Okay, and shadow effect is mm -hmm. one damage to each hero with a clue card attached. Oh no. So I suppose I might as well... I, yeah, I do want to cancel that. Okay. Because it's just going to come up next turn anyway, so... Right. Oops, I did not mean to delete Eowyn. <laughs> <laughs> so let me give her back a resource. All right. A little bit of a misclick there, but anyway, your Gondorian Spearman is going to be killed, and Hasty Stroke ends up getting rid of uh, that shadow effect, so... Right. And one damage on the Hunter for Mordor. Right. Okay. And uh, so we've seen one more as a shadow effect, so that's pretty right. good. Only two left out of 27 cards. 
Yep. So let's see. Um, to kill this dude, uh, I have to do a total of... Seven. Uh, yep. Yep, yep, yep. So Gimli is four, five, six. Not enough. So I have to send... Well, I mean, technically you would attack first, but you're exhausted. Right, right. So um, uh, do my right. attack and swing. So that hunter is yours. killed, which is great. And that'll yeah. be two tokens mm -hmm. on Banks of the Anduin. All right, so why don't we go ahead and move on to refresh? I can't do anything about my hunter there. You are now first player, so be sure to draw an additional card. We're both at 34 threat now, and that means we're dangerously close to, uh, you know, evil storm. Uh, uh, I wish I would have had this last turn. It's a piece of equipment that's very helpful when things leave play. Oh, I see. It must be a Gondorian wind instrument. All right. Toot toot. <laughs> yes. Oh, jeez. I'm uh, getting silly here. Um. Let. Uh. Let's see. Um. Well. Oh, let me. Let me see. What I'm gonna have myself draw a couple cards. Okay. Well. Yeah. Perfect. Damn it. Um. I am going to play a snowborn scout. Okay. And what do you want to target? We're going to explore that location. Our All right. Location. Perfect. So. Not only is Banks of the Anduin explored, but it's guaranteed to be one of the cards that we're going to draw. So it goes to the top of the encounter deck. Yep. And then I will put the Horn of Gondor on... Oh, I guess it doesn't really matter who it goes on. So I will put it um, on Legolas. Okay. Uh, need, I need a little short on tactics uh, resources. I kind of wish I had some more, so let's hope that sure. this will work. All right, so my planning. Yep. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and strip. Oh, I need to pay for that. So, did I pay for that? Uh, I did not, so let me go ahead and remove All that right. resource. Sorry about that. So I'll strip three lore resources to do a forest snare on the Hunters from Mordor, so now it can have whatever threat and attack value it likes. It cannot attack. Uh, mm -hmm. which I'm perfectly fine with. I'm also going to go ahead and spend two spirit resources for a Westfold Horse Breaker. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and discard it. Uh, oh, I guess you don't even have to uh, exhaust. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. Yeah, there's no way to do it. So I'm just going to go ahead and discard the Westfold Horse Breaker to, first of all, trigger your Horn of Gondor, and second of all, okay. ready Barivor. Okay. And that is all I'm going to do. Okay. So, shall we go ahead and do our questing? Uh, yep, I'll do Theodred. He gets his own resource, and it's all you. Okay, so I will go ahead and do Barivor, Bilbo, Eowyn, the Northern Tracker, and that is three, seven... Eight for a total of nine. If we get... I know we're going to get the Banks of the Anduin. If we mm -hmm. end up getting a Hunters from Mordor, it's still going to be valued at six unless we get another clue. So okay. that would be a total of... Uh, well, first of all, let me deal Northern Tracker's right. ability. Right. So that gets rid of one location. So if we do that, that'll be a total of ten. Uh, I did three, uh, seven, eight. You brought it to nine. I uh, you've got you well. You've got an ally too, so I'll send Erebor Hammersmith as well to make it ten. Okay. Really, all we've got to do is just two progress. Okay. Um, so I think I'm okay with our combined total of ten. Are we ready for staging? Ready. Okay. Card number one, Banks of the Anduin, called it. <laughs> card number two is. Uh, Old Wives' Tales. God, oh. this card. Discard one resource from each hero's resource pool. If able, exhaust any hero that could not discard a resource from its pool. Oh, jeez. Well, I'm able to discard, so I don't, you know. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess that's a little bit of... I guess Legolas could put a whole one damage on this Hunters from Mordor over here. Okay, so that is a frustrating card, but we've got to be running out of copies of that pretty soon. Yeah. So that means we're 10 up against 4. We're ending up going to make 6 progress. So mm -hmm. that is going to be more than enough. Uh, in the FAQ, there's a little section where it says that 
basically, when this effect is triggered, you have to do this effect before moving on to the next quest card. So first player, which is you, we're going to be revealing three cards. Uh, sorry, pick showing three cards. You pick one to mm -hmm. be revealed. So here are your three cards. Okay, let's see. So I know which one I would pick. Yep. Uh, the first one. Yes. Tetris Fall. Right, right. So we're able to uh, circumvent that discard effect. All those locations, getting plus one threat doesn't do anything because questing is already over. So it's discarded basically with no effect. The old Ford is relatively nasty. I guess it would have had a value of three, not that big of a deal. But it is gone, of course, and Eves of Mirkwood is also gone. So, travel phase. We've got two options here. What do we want to do? We've all passed on to our second quest phase. Right. So now, at the beginning of the quest phase, we're going to have a little bit more difficult time because there will be an additional encounter card there. Yeah, should we go to the Gladden Fields because it has such a high threat? The only thing with that is oh, there's... Oh, right. Well, I guess we're already 34. Right. Um, About to be 35. Yeah, Gladden Fields, so long as we make one quest progress next turn, we'll blow past it. Mm -hmm. An additional point of threat is probably not really going to do anything in the long run, so shall we just, I guess, try and get rid sure. of it now? Okay, so we'll go ahead and make that the active location with that clue still attached. And now Banks of the Anduin is the only card out there in the staging area. Mm -hmm. So engagement, no options. Combat, what do you want to do? Legolas, pot shot, one yeah. damage. Effective. Yeah. And of course, Hunters from Mordor does not get to do anything nope. at all. Which brings us to Refresh. Boost your threat up by two because of Gladden Fields. Mm -hmm. I'm now first player. And let me do my resources. And Steward of Gondor, draw two cards because of Bilbo. Ah, where's my good spirit stuff? You've got five cards in hand. Yep. One thing I forgot to do at the end of... Oh, no, I couldn't do it at the end of last turn because we lost a lot of resources. But one thing I can do now uh, is play an event. And I'll play another Campfire Tales. Great. So I'll draw a card. Mm -hmm. Glorious. I probably could have used this uh, Cancel When Revealed Effect card a little while yep. ago, but, you know, better late than mm -hmm. never. Let's see. I've got a couple of Istari companions in my hand. Uh, yep. There's there's really no rush to get rid of this Hunters from Mordor. Mm -hmm. I could drop my threat down. What are you thinking about doing in the near future? Um, I have a bunch of expensive allies in my hand. Okay. Um, and then I have some relatively cheap ones. So I was probably just going to play a... I probably won't even do anything this turn. I suppose something I could also try to do is just quest really hard. Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe I will put our little companion into play. Okay. So let me do one, two, three, four... Oh, if only I had another resource. I am first player. So would you be willing to throw a resource my way? Sure. So let me drain Barivor okay. of resources as okay. well. And that makes a total of five, and I'm going to go ahead and put uh, into play our wizard companion, Gandalf. I am Gandalf, and Gandalf means me. So... With his ability, I'm going to go ahead and drop my threat down to 31. So I'm going to reduce it by 5. Okay. And go ahead and take your planning. Not going to play anything. All right, so let's go ahead and transition into our quest phase. And I'm the first player. It's going to be important to keep in mind that now, since we're in the second quest phase, we have a new forced effect to uh, take into account. So at the very beginning of the quest phase, the first player has to look at now the top two cards of the encounter deck, reveal and add one of those cards to the staging area, and discard the other. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at what these top two cards are. Mm -hmm. And wow, I think I have lost track of how many of these bastards we have seen. Yeah. 
but Huntress from Mordor, 6 threat, 6 attack, or a Treacherous Fog, which is going to uh, make Banks of the Anduin here 2 yeah. threats. And I'm sorry to say it, my friend, but it looks like you're going to have to discard a card. <laughs> so I think I'm going to opt for the Treachery okay. here. So let me get rid of the uh, Hunters from Mordor. And what is it that you're going to discard? Well, gosh darn it, our entire series thus far, I have wanted to play <laughs> Bjorn so badly, but uh, he's just going to have to go. Yeah, well, maybe someday. Maybe someday. <laughs> but uh, we'll have to see. And I'll leave this Treachery here just to cue okay. us, since it's until the end of the phase. Mm -hmm. And for questing, we need 10 progress tokens to make it through. We're currently up against two threats. We've got two progress left to make. So I would say the odds are probably pretty low of us being able to do anything. But maybe, you know, maybe a miracle will happen. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and commit all of my characters to the quest. Northern Tracker's ability activates to throw a token onto Banks of the Anduin. And I've got a total of 2, 3, 7, 8, 9... 13 committed to the quest. Yeah. And who are you going to send? I send Theodrin. And okay. would you care for his resource? Sure. I'm going to go ahead and put that on Barogor. Okay. So we've got a total of 14 committed to the quest. Uh, hopefully nothing too nasty will come off the deck. Okay. Let's see. I know that there are definitely enough small enemies left. So, I don't know. I guess Gimli's probably fine not committed to the quest. Okay. So, let's see what we get. So, staging card number one is a Misty Mountain Goblins. Okay. Staging card number two All right. is an okay. Eaves of Mirkwood. Cool. So, looks like we're going to go ahead and be up against a total of six threat. Treacherous Fog doesn't affect locations that didn't exist when it came into play. Uh, so six threats, we are going to be making eight progress. So if we each ditch a card uh, and I'm able to play secret paths, we'll make just enough quest progress to destroy our active quest. Okay. So why don't I pay one least resource off Barivore to target Eaves of Mirkwood with Secret Paths, okay. so it does not count its threats. That's only four against us, okay. so at the present moment we're making ten progress. You discard Guard of the Citadel. Yep. I'll discard uh, one of my two copies of Daughter of the Nimrodel. So that boosts us up to sixteen. So sixteen minus four is twelve. So we're able to put two progress tokens on Gladden Fields. We add that as a victory point. Nice. And let's see here. That's uh, three victory points, actually. And then that leaves ten uh, quest tokens to go on to quest phase 2B here. Uh, there's a response that triggers since we've quested successfully. Do you want this on one of your heroes, just so you can also commit to the quest? Um... Does it have to be on the person who is questing? Uh, it No, it can be on, let's see here, uh, after the player's quest successfully, the players may claim it, attached to any hero committed to the quest. So it would go on Theodred. Right. And the important thing to keep in mind is now that we're in 3B, it's any player who does not control a hero with at least one clue cannot commit to the quest. Okay, so it doesn't matter who it goes on, but right. Uh, right. it can go on Theodred, that's fine. Sounds fine to me. So, perfect. Now, all we've got to do is make eight progress, mm -hmm. and we'll be able to win the game. Yeah. So, all right. So, be that as it may, Treacherous Fog is, of course, gone at this point. Mm -hmm. um, it's looking like things are relatively manageable. We have got our travel phase next. So, we have Eaves of Mirkwood and Banks of the Anduin. Well, you were first player. What do you think? Uh, let's see. I suppose we're... Well, it doesn't really matter too much one way or the other. We're going to be killing something this turn, mm -hmm. so I suppose we could get rid of the eaves. Okay. Um, or alternatively, it puts two points on our quest, so it really doesn't matter at all, unless we were to, say, get another Treacherous Fog, which would add additional threat. So right. I guess, why don't we travel to the okay. eaves? There's no better time to do that. Sure. So, well... 
I guess the other option is to travel to Banks of the End when knowing that it'll be on top of the encounter deck, mm -hmm. but... Yeah, I think it's probably all right. Yeah, whatever. So, I guess <laughs> just another thing is if I were to, say, draw another Northern Tracker, dump that into play, then the Banks would be yep. explored anyway, yeah. but any case, Missy Mountain Goblins, would you like to engage Sure. It? All right, so there you are, my good sir. And combat. So shadow card. And honestly, I'm not sure if I remember this previously, but this Hunters from Mordor, even though it's not attacking, it's still dealt a shadow card. Okay. So I would imagine I probably screwed that up earlier. Um, you'll have to forgive that mistake. Encounter cards all are technically random, so hopefully this shouldn't have influenced the outcome. It could have been anything in some alternate universe. Correct. But, be that as it may, Misty Mountain Goblins, what do you want to do? Don't you need to do your defense first? Oh, but he's not attacking. Yes. Attacking. <laughs> so it's not attacking. So, but you could reveal the shadow card for fun. Um, right, so the shadow card is discarded at the end of the turn. Oh, yeah, I guess no that's effect. true. Yeah. I always like to know. I'm nosy. Uh, Snowborn Scout. Or All right, Snowborn Scout. Uh, if you do not control at least one hero, wow, that's actually pretty nasty. Yeah. If you don't control a hero with at least one clue attached, double this enemy's base attack value. Mm. So that ends up uh, not doing anything, of that course, be, since you do have a clue. Yeah, that would be but super, Snowborn Scout super horrible on the hunters yeah. if they had some clues in play. Right. Well, they did use the term base attack oh, that's value, true. so that's I would true. assume it would only be four. Yeah, either way, still, still yeah. Two attacks. So Snowborn series, Scout so. leaves play. That means my Horn of Gondor triggers. Right. And this forced effect from the Misty Mountain Goblins does not do anything. Yep. And so attacking... Um, let's see. Uh, Legolas doesn't have enough to do it himself. Is that right? Uh, right. He's one yeah, shot. Yeah, so I have to do both. All right. But you're able to dispatch this vicious opponent. Mm -hmm. And that puts two progress tokens on the eaves of Mirkwood, yep. which means it is explored yep. completely. And, of course, at the end of the turn, this shadow card is going to be okay. removed with no effect. Cool. So, perfect. Shall we refresh? Sure. You are now the first player. Mm -hmm. Boost your threat by one. Be sure to draw an extra card from Bilbo. Yep. And I will draw and do my resources. Okay, oh, resources, that would be helpful. Yeah, so I guess this round, any willpowering is going to be uh, absolutely important. Oh, and your Gandalf goes away as well, correct? Oh, yes, so, so Gandalf mm -hmm. is discarded, and your horn triggers. Yeah, so we get another resource. Well, Gandalf wasn't gone for long, because here he is again. I am Gandalf, and Gandalf... Perfect. Yeah. You uh, actually stole my play. Oh, did I? Well, too bad. <laughs> yes. Right, so, right, so Legolas and Theodrid will pay for him. I suppose I should just reduce my threat by five. Okay. So Evil Storm now does yep. nothing to and you. And then I will play a uh, veteran axe hand with Gimli. Great. All right, so why don't I go ahead and wrap up my hopefully last planning phase here by uh, doing a little... It's not really risky, but I'm just going to go ahead and play some allies, make some use of my resources. I'll play a Westfold Horse Breaker, okay. and I'm going to go ahead and spend my uh, remaining lore resources for an... I suppose a Glaywine. Okay. So, I suppose that's all I'm going to do. Okay. Shall we go ahead and quest? Yeah. So, bef so we, we each have a clue, first mm -hmm. of all, so we can both commit. Yeah. So, Theodred for me. I'll, okay. Uh, has to give the resource to himself. Um, okay. I'll send Gandalf as well. Okay. Do you think there's a need for me to do anyone else? You have quite a few characters now. I would, uh, let's see, I guess worst case scenario, I honestly have lost track if there are any hunters left. If any, I think there's one. Yeah, 
Um, if there is one, it's going to be threat six. Let's say this is seven. Maybe we'd get another location that adds um, equal to the number of allies in play, which would be four, five, six. So that would be a total of, let's say, 13 that the encounter deck could bring against us mm. at, you know, worst possible case. Um, we would have to have 21. I would do 2, 3, uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You'd make 15, 16, 17, 18 with Gimli. Uh, we'd each pitch a card to do 20. You could also do Legolas for 21. I think we could probably send probably just every character just to absolutely make sure that we win. Okay. I've got a cancel when revealed effect if everything goes to okay. hell and i think odds are in our favor that we're gonna okay pass. so then i will send legolas and gimli all right so everybody in the club come into the quest northern tracker puts a token on banks the you end know, one if we're going to do that then i am actually going to change my mind on who gets the resource and give it to legolas okay perhaps because i need a uh, tactics right maybe for a feint who knows? Uh, perhaps. Yeah. It's almost as though I've played this game before. <laughs> All right, so I've done two, three, four, f uh, anyway, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, nineteen. So we've got a total of nineteen committed. Why don't we go ahead and see what we reveal? Okay, no clues, no hunters. No whammies. Card number one. <laughs> big bucks, big bucks. Gladden Fields. All right, off to a good start. <laughs> as yep. in, we automatically win. Card number two. Uh, the oh. old Ford. So I predicted one, and this is yeah. four, five, six. Value of six, nine, ten versus nineteen base. So we're going to end up making a uh, nine quest progress. Hey, what do you know? And if we were to both pitch a card, that would uh, buffer it just slightly. So uh, looks like the bet paid off. Yeah. So at this point, uh, we've made just as many progress tokens as we need. We've ended the game with two clue cards in play. We only needed one, uh, but we have defeated this stage. We have apparently once again found a true sign of Gollum's passing and won the game. So I guess now that we've been a little bit uh, better off this play through the game, what are your final thoughts about the hunt for Gollum? <laughs> <sighs> well, I sir, I'm certainly glad that we uh, did much better this time. Um, it's an okay quest, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I, I'm not thrilled with it. I I don't really remember what I felt about it, you know, a year or so ago. I think we were just so again, it was delayed and delayed and delayed because of customs checks. We were so happy to have a new quest that I think I probably loved it more than I should have back in the day. It's it's an okay start, I think, to the Shadows of Mirkwood cycle. Yeah, I've got to say I'm definitely biased. I mean, having the core set, and then there was something like a two-and-a-half or three-month wait before we finally were able to start the living card game cycle. Uh, it was definitely, you know, oh, it's so amazing to be playing anything but the core set. Uh, I definitely did have some really good experiences with Hunt for Gollum, though. Uh, our first video, of course, was an absolute blowout, but I've definitely <laughs> had some play experiences that struck more of a balance between, you know, catastrophic failure and relatively easy skate to victory like this one. I really didn't feel like we were in too much peril. There's just a lot of kind of irritating effects where it's kind of, you know, the quest deck can reset, which sets you back. You can get all your resources sapped and your heroes exhausted, which, which sets you back. There's expensive uh, abilities like, um, you know, this card costs an additional one to play and some things like right. that. So, I get why they have so many locations. We're, we're exploring, we're trying to find these signs, these clues of Gollum. I think the quest for me would have been a bit more fun if there had been a few more enemies that would have made it... I mean, the hunters certainly make it tense, but outside of them, there isn't much. So I think there maybe if there had been a few more enemies hunting us while we're hunting Gollum, this quest would have shined, I think, a little bit brighter. Sure. There's the, uh, the only other new enemy was those Goblin Town scavengers, and really their only gimmick is when they come into play, they can have astronomically high threat, but if you're willing to throw out a win revealed, it's they're pretty inconsequential. So. Did we even see one this game? Or no, last game? I don't think we did. Let me just go no. ahead and pull one out of the encounter deck. Um, 
but oh i guess it was uh next card coming up but yeah okay. so uh, threat value anywhere oh, right. from right, right. one to say 13 so i think we did see one last time yeah i believe so it was part Not of the massive <laughs> well i think it only right. had like a threat value for or something like that right but... right i've erased that game from my memory yeah <laughs> But uh, in any case, this was all right. I'm glad that there wasn't a, an attempt to take three, four, five, or six for sure. Yeah. But uh, I guess that about covers it. So as always, I'll just remind you guys that if you like this video, be sure to hit that uh, like button. If you enjoy this series, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Uh, if you thought of any ways that we could maybe tackle this scenario differently, if you want to share any good play experiences you've had, if you want to let us know what your opinion is of the Hunt for Gollum, uh, but other than that, it was a lot of fun, and we'll have to catch you guys next time as we take on the conflict at the Carrick. Sounds good. I can't wait to battle some trolls.